Hello and welcome to Express Sports Podcast. You're listening to Game Time with me, me, Hirva Savda. And as always, well, sitting next to me in a shirt which is extremely similar in the way it looks and feels. So I haven't felt it, but it just looks like that uh, is Amit Kamat. Amit, welcome. As always, we have plenty to talk about this week in sport. Uh, uh, not least the IPL, which uh, began on Friday. But we are going a little bit off track. Ja rahe hai. I mean, in the sense that it will be a little left-leaning story. Ho jayega, we are going indoors in a way, Mihir. Indoors in a way. Left-leaning uh, perhaps was not the right usage here. So we, we're talking about uh, chess and not the on-board action as such, not your usual Anands and Pragnanandas and Gukeshes, but something that has happened in terms of organizing an event in New Delhi, which has a Indian hospitality ko dharti par thoda la hai. Uh, maybe we'll get kind of smacked for saying that. But after the high of Chess Olympiad last year, there were a few embarrassing uh, turn of events uh, in the last few days, Amit, uh, weren't there? Absolutely. How often does the FIDE president spend the preceding few days before his birthday writing open letters to chess fraternity and women chess players apologizing, you know? But that is what has happened. If For those who don't know about this, the Chess Grand Prix, the New Delhi leg, which is the third leg of the Chess Grand Prix tour, was supposed to hap- start in New Delhi last Saturday. Unfortunately, due to circumstances, which we don't exactly know who created the circumstances, but then because of one way or another, because of circumstances, the tournament did not start on Saturday. It had to be pushed ahead to Sunday. Mr. RKD Dvorkovic, who is the FIDE president, spent all of his Saturday actually negotiating with some of the players, trying to get them back on the board as, as it were. So yeah, it was a very, very unusual build-up to a tournament. And as you said, it was a very, very a reality check of sorts for... So India, to be fair, India hosted a great chess Olympiad. I don't think yeah. there was one uh, person complaining about the chess Olympiad, which was held in Chennai. Thousands of people came down here. Uh, they had a great tournament. And then 2023, we go into March 2023, where the New Delhi Grand Prix is going to be held. Exactly 12 players were supposed to compete. Nine of them were supposed to come from abroad. Three of them were Indians. Now, this has become a logistical nightmare for the (laughs) hosts for some reason. That's what beats me, right, about this story. I mean, the reason we we chose to speak about this issue is precisely this. Because Chess Olympiad, India hosted around 1,000 people. And here you're talking about nine chess players. in one hotel the competition is there the the players are staying there it's a short event compared to the olympiad it's the logistics are way less complicated there isn't the government at the state and the central level involved ki aapko kafi sari save red tape agar jo aapko beat karna aisa kuch bhi nahi hai it's just a very simple thing but i mean getting to the meat of the issue here right so what happened uh, is uh, there's this the checkmate of the issue. Oh, well, I mean, if, if there's going to be a competition of bad jokes, then our, re- our listeners are going to be in for a very, very tough time. But serious story baate ho jaya, Amit. So, I mean, what happened is that one of the participants, uh, Zansaya Abdul Malik, she was to reach Delhi. She reached Delhi uh, in the middle of the night. Turns out there was no one to receive her. Not just receive her, but there was uh, no information of where she'd be staying. It was hotel room. Ka bhi scene tha. Uh, so what happens eventually is she waits for, I think, close to an hour and a half or two hours. Then she's taken to her hotel where she doesn't have a room. Kafi sari usme complications ho jate hai. And then from the hotel where she was staying, she claimed that it was unhygienic. There was... Uh, Ek Delhi, agar jo aap rehte ho ya aap gaye ho, then you'll, you'll see these wonderful uh, sightings, you know, tourist attractions of sorts almost, jahan par kude ke pahar bane huye. There are literally mountains uh, that, are, that have been made out of garbages. So, I'm assuming she referred to one of those uh, things, if not the usual garbage, which, which is 
आई मीन डेली में लेट्स बी ब्रूटली ऑनेस्ट अबाउट दैट सो वो था शी डेंट फील सिक्योर एट द होटल एंड द लोकेशन वेर द होटल वॉज देर आई मीन यू नो हाउ चेस प्लेयर्स आर आई मीन एवरी थिंग फॉर देम हैज टू बी परफेक्ट I mean, these are the things which should be perfect for everyone. But especially when you're playing chess, you need to be clear, clear in your mind. You you can't be really be distracted with these things. And then the next day, she said that look, I'm not in a position. I'm not in the right frame of mind to compete, and I am going home. That triggered a sequence of events which uh, led to, like Amit said, open letter by the FIDE president. FIDE, of course, being the International Chess Federation. The problem did not just start with one player. In fact, it was a much larger problem where. most of these players when they landed at the airport at ungodly hours of the day they were all told that they had vehicles uh, most of them had vehicles one of one or two of them did not have vehicles but even those who had vehicles were given transport to the hotels were told that there were there was no escorts with them so at one or two in the night a foreign female chess player turns up in your country she is transported by just a cab driver and her then they are taken to the hotel where the hotel very graciously tells them that they are free to stay in the lobby because their hotel rooms are not ready yet now that is that is the real shoddiness i mean yeah. maybe one person not getting picked up from the airport you can may be excuse but once you land at the hotel and the hotel guys already know for from many months i'm assuming or weeks at least in advance that you know your hotel room is not ready you knew that for a while but their rooms were not ready so that happened finally somehow they did some old fashioned indian jugaad they managed to get them into rooms now the thing about indian jugaads is it comes with an expiry date so again these players were told the next day that they'd have to move out of those hotel rooms and move into other hotel rooms which i am assuming pissed off a lot of them so as you said uh, zan saya abdul malik obviously uh, decided to move move back home and not play in the tournament then another faction of the players they wrote a letter to fide saying that they would like for the tournament to be postponed which fide said no we can't do that yeah. and the reasons are even more stranger they are like you know we can't set a precedent where one player derails an entire tournament just because of whatever pulling out so that eventually led to 11 players being told that you have to play and we are not going to change the groupings around which is again a big deal because that meant that some of them would play more games with white as opposed to uh, black which means they started first which means they obviously had an advantage in the middle of all of this another german grandmaster Elizabeth Parts she decides she does not want any more of this and she decides to go back home now we are left with 10 players in a grand prix that already had only 12 players and meer i might remind you that just before the tournament started also it wasn't so smooth because two ukrainian sisters had already pulled out of the tournament saying that they don't want to compete if there are russians yes. going to be playing so i mean it was a very very curtailed tournament to begin with uh, it was a very affected tournament to begin with and and it's a shame right because i mean grand prix is an important event this is the first time india was hosting it there was a lot of excitement not just because uh, the top two indian uh, chess players women chess players konuru ampi and harika were playing there but also india number 3 r vaishali was taking part in it and it attracted some of the best women chess players in the world so you had players like alexandra koryachenka katrina lagno polina shuvalova all these are among the highest ranked chess players in the world and it is uh, agar jo hum equivalents ki hum log agar jo dekhe to it's like a say a thousand series uh, tennis tournament or you know what say the level of tournament that uh, the all england and uh indonesian masters are in badminton the champions trophy is in cricket so you really have the cream of world chess uh, coming to your city to your country to your nation's capital by the way yeah to your nation's capital and and then this happens and happens i mean the thing that you mentioned about the problems they faced at the hotel and stuff now this particular hotel it's it's in east delhi 
uh, it's a hotel which is used by most organizers most federations to to accommodate uh, traveling athletes so it's not uh, an unusual for them to see people landing up at ungodly hours anyway if you're a five star hotel you should be prepared to host anyone at any time but uh, especially in this case because they know that sports persons from abroad arrive at random hours they'll have specific requests so it's it's not uh, unusual in that sense but then i mean delhi being delhi and i'm, I'm we're not taking pot shots at a city it's just the lax attitude sometimes of the organizers which leads to circumstances like these and it is unpleasant i mean uh, amit i was just telling you before we started recording i mean one of the i don't know hilarious uh, slash embarrassing things uh, for me as a sports nut is ki alessandro del piero when he was playing for delhi dynamos in, in isl he was kept in a hotel he was kept in a hotel room jahan se uska view from the room was uh, uh, you know a nala <laughs> i mean it's just uh, things which shouldn't be happening but they happen and del piero well he i guess wasn't bothered or or the other facilities in the isl back then were really really nice so perhaps he could ignore that but not if you are a chess player and uh, anyway you're like focusing concentrating all the time और फिर कमरे में जाके अगर जो आपका व्यू एंड ये सराउंडिंग्स आर अनप्लेजेंट देन रियली नॉट द मोस्ट आइडियल ऑफ सिचुएशन या सो मीर ऑब्वियसली यू नो चेस प्लेयर्स आर वन ऑफ दोज पीपल हु रियली लाइक द इंडोज एंड आई डोंट मीन दैट दे आर इंट्रोवर्ड्स बट लाइक फॉर फॉर अ फुटबॉल प्लेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैव टू ट्रेन फॉर अ गेम यू गो आउटसाइड फॉर अ चेस प्लेयर वेन यू वॉन्ट टू ट्रेन यू आर ऑब्वियसली कूप्ड अप इंडोर्स doing all the training so sometimes when you want to catch a view of the city outside it can't be smoldering garbage mounds right so obviously i understand the frustration of the players but yeah so that kind of has led to this big issue in women's chess it it has kind of highlighted this issue in women's chess of you know them not being given their due and I think it's very telling because last year FIDE celebrated uh, the year of women in chess. 2022 was the year of women in chess. And this year uh, there have been way too many issues for women in chess that have come forth. This is just a minuscule uh, this logistical fopa is just a minuscule thing. Uh, we've had much much more serious issues uh, that we've heard plaguing women in chess. Absolutely and uh, like you said uh, this is on the face of it a logistical issue i mean uh, it shouldn't have happened but this has been just a month ago in women's chess we've seen a me too scandal so it began in the us where a grandmaster had to resign from a chess club because he was accused by eight women players of uh, making unwanted sexual advances uh, at them and on the back of this news uh, grandmaster susan polger who's i mean one of the legends of of chess uh, she opened up on twitter on how deep rooted and institutionalized uh, sexual misconduct had been in chess and it's just uh, unfortunate that like you said if world chess is celebrating this year of women and then these things continue to happen it just uh, leaves a very bad taste absolutely on top of that so we still don't know the full extent of the issue like we know for a fact that eight women have come out and spoken out against alejandro ramirez we also know that some of these women have actually gone and complained to his employers st louis chess club which is one of the most iconic chess clubs in the world based in usa and the response from the chess club was to not do a lot so that kind of also tells you how difficult it must be to a woman in chess but yeah so this also kind of highlights how bad things have been in chess historically absolutely and i can't imagine this happening say for example if magnus carlsen is coming to india and something like this happens and and this is precisely the situation it's not a what about re nahi hai because there were a women a world blitz champion and and players of that caliber coming here so yeah i mean uh, that's uh, that's more or less about this issue and uh, i mean we'll of course be keeping a track uh, of this tournament which is still ongoing in delhi and hopefully we'll have an update next week of uh, fingers crossed uh, no further incidents uh, amit uh, we'll we'll move to another topic which has dominated the news cycle 
and not IPL. So this has been a news heavy week. Uh, a friend of our pod, Keshav Sunkara, had written to us to talk about, you know, the impact of uh, the World Athletics ruling of not allowing transgender athletes in in sport. He had reached out and and asked us to have a discussion on that topic. Well, uh, Keshav, that is something that we'll hope to do in the future. Just that it requires from our end as well lots of uh, research, and we need to be sure about the science before we talk about it as well. So we shall do it uh, sooner rather than later. But I mean, we spoke about chess, and chess is a sport where Russian players have switched their federation from Europe to Asia so that they can compete more. And that is one topic which is dominating the Olympic news cycle for quite some time. Even this week, Amit, we had the International Olympic Committee meeting uh, in Lausanne where they have, in a way, kept the door open for Russian athletes to compete at the Paris Olympics. But it is getting increasingly complicated, isn't it? Absolutely, Meer. So, obviously, the IOC is somebody which is very, very adept at crisis management. But I think in the lead up to the Paris Olympics, they do have a lot of issues that they have to sort out yet. Starting with, as you said, Russia and Belarusian uh, athletes' participation. You know, Mihir, the most telling thing that has happened is that recently, just last week, 300 athletes in fencing, which is the the sport that propelled Thomas Bach to an Olympic medal, a multiple Olympic medal, in fact. In that sport itself, 300 athletes have written a letter saying that we don't want Russian athletes to compete with them. Now, that is a movement that you can only foresee to be growing in other sports as well. How that finally impacts and how that finally leads to Russians being there at the Paris Olympics, we'll have to see. But it's a it's a minefield of a you know an issue for even the IOC to negotiate even with their crisis managers. Ha! Huh, and that's the thing, right? In this, because IOC, uh, like uh, they were saying, ki on one side they're being accused by Ukrainians of uh, you know siding with Russia. And then Russia is alleging the other way. So it just shows how complicated this situation is. Uh, and multiple sides say, so if if they decide right now to allow Russians, which probably, so what the IOC is in a sense saying, ki they will allow Russian and Belarusian athletes under the neutrality clause, which uh, essentially means that none of the athletes should have supported the war or been a part of it. Abhi, Amit Ismay, the biggest problem is if you go back to the Tokyo Olympics medal table, then I'm assuming more than 50% of Russian athletes were in one way or the other related to the armed forces. So either they're employed by the army, military, by the uh, services, like a lot of Indians are as well. And that will rule them out straight up. Then the IOC has also said that the teams won't be allowed, Russian teams won't be allowed. That takes away another major chunk of athletes. So you're left with a very limited pool of players. And how you'll accommodate them at the Paris Olympics is also a question mark. Because now with every passing week, uh, your qualification cycle also kind of narrows down. Even though it will peak uh, starting second half of the year to, to early next year. But it's already started. So your opportunities to qualify are getting fewer and fewer as well. But Meer, even that leads me to two different uh, segues or questions. First, eventually, whatever Russians are still allowed to be at the Olympics at Paris, how does the IOC, how can the IOC basically guarantee that these athletes after winning medals won't go back to Russia and be paraded in the army or suddenly find themselves inducted into the army as captains or whatnot? So that obviously is not, I don't think it's a foolproof solution as sorts. Second, if you are going to ban Russian athletes who are who have military ties or army ties in Russia, will you also be extending the same to Ukraine and telling them that any athlete who's you know been part of the uh, Ukrainian armed forces have been on the front lines, even they have to be banned? Or where where do you draw the line of who's allowed and who's not? Again, it's a thing of what about re, but if IOC starts, uh, you know saying that Russia has invaded Ukraine, so they won't be allowed, then where do you stop? There are multiple wars happening in, in all continents, if not full-fledged wars, but then there are like micro 
uh, violent situations in every continent and, and so so there is practically uh, if you it's like a pandora's box right now and uh, i think that's a tricky call i know where i stand on this on this uh, topic but we we'll, we'll leave that uh, for some other episode oh uh, yeah and i think that should be done. Um, unless samit there's something else that you want to add yeah so i i don't think uh, there is a lot to say we've i'm pretty sure we've left our listeners with a lot on their plate and you know for to wrap, to wrap their head around but for now we'd just like to say thank you for listening we'd also like you to follow our sister pod express deliveries where we are going to be talking about the upcoming season or the already on season of ipl where we are going to talk about pretty much everything all the talking points all the 10 teams that are there everything you can expect from the two and a half month shebang that is the ipl but for now uh, thank you so much for listening this is me amit kamath and my co-host meher wasawda signing off goodbye you were listening to express sports by the indian express this week's show was edited and mixed by abhishek kumar and produced by me shashank bhargav if you like the show then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast you can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it share it with a friend or someone in your family it's the best way for people to get to know about us you can also tweet us at express audio and write to us at podcast@indianexpress.com at